Hey guys, welcome back to the second episode of Tea Talks. In these Tea Talk sessions, I chat to you just like a friend would in the comfort of her own home with a cup of tea. So it's quite full, so I'm trying to be a bit slow. I don't want to get on the bed. But this is it, cup of positivity and the tea of choice today, some English breakfast tea. And I've got a big cup today because there's a lot to talk about. So get comfortable, make your own hot beverage of choice. It doesn't have to be tea, you can have your matcha, you can have your coffee or your hot chocolate. And we're gonna chat. As you could have guessed from the title of the video, I will be turning 27. And 27, uh, it's a big, it's a big thing, I don't know, I feel like... I'm just getting older. <laughs> Hopefully I'm getting wiser. I was just reflecting on my life and I realized I learned so many things during my 20s. I'm gonna share 27 things that I learned in my 20s that has helped me change my life for the better. Things that I wish I knew earlier but I'm happy that I've learned now in my life and I want to share. So yeah, I hope you find it useful. Disclaimer, everyone's lived their life differently. People have different upbringings, experiences, and journeys. My advice or things that I found helpful in my journey may be different from yours. So take Take it with a grain of salt and take the points that you find helpful. Let's start with point one. Learn to ride with the waves. Let's start off with a story. Last week, life happened. Unfortunately, um, if you know, I've started YouTube recently. I started December time. I have an external hard drive where I put all my videos, all my clips, all my content, and also precious photos and video clips with my family. Essentially, that the external hard drive broke. I don't know how. I don't know why. The next two months of planned filmed content has been wiped and is gone so yeah i didn't plan for that things like this always remind me that life is not always smooth sailing life is more of like a sea with multiple waves sometimes life is up sometimes life is down and it's very highly unpredictable what life will throw at you if i kind of step back a bit it's just an external hard drive and memories can be replaced and it's okay i learned a valuable lesson to back up my content but it just reminded me of the patients that I treat and talk to in hospital. So when patients are given a diagnosis that they didn't expect, that was shocking, unpredictable. Talking to them after receiving the bad news, most of them say the same thing. Life happens, all we can do is adapt and be strong and just keep going, not just for ourselves, but for our loved ones and learn to ride with the waves. And the more we know that and appreciate that, the more we can bounce back and get back up quicker. I don't know why I started off with this one. This is a quite a deep, very deep one. But these are deep talks. So my tea talks are not lighthearted. They're very deep, emotional talks. So if you really like that, keep watching. So the next one, the present is a present. I realized that it's very important to live in the present. The more I practice being mindful and being in the present moment, the more I'm at peace and the more I feel happier. It's difficult because we get easily distracted by the ruminations on the past and also our worries about the future. Sometimes when I catch myself thinking about the past or worrying about the future, I think about, okay, let's live in the moment. Let's think about our senses. So I go through each one. So with my eyes, what can I see around me at the moment? I have a beautiful bed. I have some flowers that one of my best friends gave me as a present. I have, um, you can't see behind you, but I have a beautiful view of the window. Or you can think about your sense of touch. I can feel my clothes on my skin. I can feel the bed on my, bum <laughs> and on my legs. I can feel this warm cup of tea. I can taste this warm cup of tea and I can hear, I don't know if you can hear, but like earlier I could hear the birds chirping away. So it just brings me back here and makes me feel grounded. Okay, this leads me on to another thing that I've been doing, daily gratitude. We often take for granted the very things that deserve our gratitude. My parents are from the Philippines and they, there was a moment in their life when they were my age or younger than my age where they didn't have a roof over their heads and for me at my age to have a roof over my head for me to be able to study and achieve my dream of being a doctor and also have the means to make a YouTube account and for you watching, you probably have a phone, a TV or an iPad or computer that you're watching this from and you also have internet so those are a lot of things to be grateful for and we, we always take these things for granted because we have it and use it daily but it just imagine not having that. So don't wait until things are taken away from you. It doesn't have to be things or items. It can be people, it can be loved ones. So I think we just need to really appreciate everything that we have in this present moment. Don't take anyone or anything for granted. A grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. The more grateful you are of your life and of 
the things around you, the less time you have to complain, the less time you have to think negatively. So the next one. The next one I think is very, very, very useful. It's something that I'm still developing and I'm still learning and that is financial literacy. So financial literacy. What's financial literacy, Demi? I have a definition here. Financial literacy is understanding and effectively using various financial skills, including personal financial management, budgeting, and investing. I only started learning about it once I graduated medical school and I started earning a monthly wage. I realized that I don't know much about personal finance. How should I budget? How should I save? What should I do with my money to make sure that it's not going down and with inflation? And I wish I learned earlier and I wish I started earlier because the earlier you start, the more you know and the more you can save and invest and the more your money will work for you rather than you work for it. If you're already one of those finance people, that's great and good on you. But if you are like me and it it's overwhelming and you just don't know what, where to start or what to do. I really recommend two books that has helped me and I thought explain you know fin finances, inflation, budgeting, investments in really simple terms. Rich Dad Per Dad by Robert Kiyosaki and also another book that I read Why Didn't They Teach Me in School? 99 Personal Money Management Principles to Live By Carl Seigel and another one I think You Are a Badass at Making Money. I think that's the name of it. I'll put the book here but that's about money mindset and I think that really helped me as well. So those are three books that I would recommend if you haven't started your personal finance journey. Okay, so I've done all the long ones. I've written all the quick fire ones here. So I'll remember all of them. I'll try not to talk too long or this video will last five days. But let's start. Focus on what you can control in life rather than what you can't and you'll live a life with more peace and I really believe that if we can't control life or control what it throws at us what we can control is what we do about it and our feelings our emotion our mindset and our actions that's what we can control and next one oh this one's really good just as life has ups and downs and seasons friendships also have highs and lows and seasons I think I believe that God or the universe puts certain people in their life in different times of our life and for a reason and if it if it just happens to be a certain group of people that will benefit you and will help you or have the similar interests and that's great and you don't have to be friends with the same people your whole entire life just be grateful for those friendships and those groups that you had at certain points of your life that made you very happy just know that it's normal to change friend groups every once in a while depending on the season in your life oh this one's also very good and and something that I always say to myself but comparison is a thief of joy yeah I touched upon this in another video or my vlogs but comparison can be healthy if it encourages you to be better to improve yourself then yes that's great but if it makes you feel bitter or negative or sad then there's something going on there um, it's either there's something you need to fix in yourself or you shouldn't be comparing at all. Um, everyone has different lives and different journeys different paths that's different from yours we, we can't the same people and the only person that you should compare or you know have competition with is the person you were yesterday or the person you were before. I always remind myself that every time I get bitter or I feel negative. Okay and then the next one is to not care what people think. Okay so I am a person that I care a lot about what people think. I've watched a lot of videos on this actually because there was times in my life where I was just so frustrated in myself because I cared so much about what people think that it'll stop me from doing things that I love, things that make me happy. Now, what I say to myself to stop me caring so much is to remember that if what you want to do that you're so worried about makes you happy, will improve your life and it doesn't actively harm others, just do it and do you. Maybe many people will you know unfollow you dislike you you'll not get as much likes you'll not get as much love if it makes you happy who cares um the right people will support you and the right people will love you like i was so worried about this youtube i have these thoughts that people think i'm weird that people think i'm like superficial or things like that but i'm doing this because i love it and it makes me happy and it's so fun for me why do i care like i don't even know if people think that way and if people do think that way then fine i'm not actively harming them and the more I do this, the more people who support and think this is fun or interesting to have come forward. You just find out who's there for you and who supports you and who truly loves you for who you are. And it's 
an amazing thing and it's an amazing feeling and I, it's just my encouragement to you to just do what you want to do I'm here for you I believe in you and you've got this and if you are worried about it then send me a message we can chat and I'd be happy to help and support to add to that I want to talk about this other point life should be shared with others if you know me if you've, if you've watched my videos you know I'm an introvert I love being at home I love my time at home like today my boyfriend's working it's my off day and I'm so happy just staying at home and there was a time where actually I was at home all the time and I didn't see people I thought just being with maybe my boyfriend when he's around um, was enough or my family sometimes but I realized that it's an excuse like saying I'm an introvert I think life should be shared with others I don't think I can do YouTube and keep going without so much support and talking to other people about it so now I've been trying to meet up with people in smaller groups and I learned so much like you don't realize how much you learn from other people as I've already mentioned so many times people have different experiences and journeys so they can give you so much advice they can give you a different perspective in life when moving to Edinburgh I wanted to meet more people I met up with my friend who's also a fellow youtuber and creative Katie and I actually told my boyfriend I didn't want to go to Glasgow because I'm an introvert and I just preferred to be at home and I didn't want to meet people it's a lot of energy for me he pushed me to go and I went and it was a life-changing experience like I just will say I wouldn't have restarted my YouTube account without seeing her and without her words of encouragement so life should be shared and for my fellow introverts go out and meet people this is supposed to be quick fire so this one's a quick fire one practice self-love and self-acceptance learn to appreciate your strengths and weaknesses and be kind to yourself I try to my best to be kind to my friends and to to my loved ones and people around me but I should also focus on being kinder to myself and I encourage you to also be kind to you and that also leads on to my other point be your own best friend be your own cheerleader uh, yes people can give you support people can give you advice as we discussed and people are great but at the end of the day they can give you all the kindness all the positivity in the world but if you're not kind to yourself if you're not your own cheerleader if you're not there rooting yourself on then it's a waste like you, you need to believe it and you need to be your own best friend and cheerleader um i guess those two are kind of similar but let's just put them two points so i learned this after becoming a doctor it's that we are multifaceted individuals so we're not our job we are more than that <laughs> when i started becoming a doctor i i don't know I, I i don't know whether other doctors felt this way or don't, you don't have to be a doctor in whatever profession you're in do you ever feel like you have to be a certain way depending on what your profession is i don't know why i thought this but i just in my head doctors should be serious stern uh, very fluent just have their whole life together and are just intelligent all the time and amazing <laughs> i don't know why and then i just felt like i had to be this certain way i had to be a certain type of person to be a good doctor uh, of course i'm not saying that we we shouldn't be you know reliable responsible good leader things like that i completely understand that doctors should be like that their job involves life and death there's these interpersonal skills that and knowledge that you need to have but then we can be more than just a doctor and i feel like happier doctors are ones that know who they are outside of medicine and inside of medicine i wish i told demi earlier that you can be a doctor but you can be other things too you don't have to be just this doctor or this idea of a doctor whatever profession you're in you, you're not defined by your job and you're not defined by what people think of you because of your job you are your own person and you can do other great amazing things outside of your job and that's kind of gave me the courage or that mindset to pursue all the other things i want to be and i think if you only focus on one thing if something goes wrong in that one thing you your self-worth or self belief goes down as well and yeah, these are supposed to be rapid fire but i keep talking sorry <laughs> i wonder how long this video is going to be next one is set healthy boundaries for those people that are people pleasers like me i've been a people pleaser since i was young in primary school my parents would make me amazing lunch boxes i remember this this plastic lunch box and my it's kind of like a bento that my parents make sometimes they make me filipino food and then they always add little snacks so sometimes it could be the snackables or it can be like um the baby bell that i love i love baby bell or um, it could be like those packet of raisins. I know many people don't love them, but you know those red packets of raisins? I'll put it here. I was a very hungry child. I love food. Even now, I still love food and I was excited to eat everything. I don't know if it was low-key bullying, but there were some children like every single lunchtime when they knew I had the raisins, they asked for it. And I loved it so much and I 
couldn't say no and I would give it to them. And it's not just even in primary school. I remember there's a lot of times where people ask me to do things even though I didn't want to do it or, or I just didn't have the energy to do it or time to do it but I would just say yes because I just wanted to please people. I, I'll make a separate video on people pleasing itself if you guys are interested. I'm just trying to do quick fire but I learned that we need to set healthy boundaries. People pleasers especially set healthy boundaries will make you better and will keep your peace. And there's this quote that I came across recently. Um, I'll find it and I'll read it. This one, do not set yourself on fire just to keep others warm. <laughs> Don't be afraid of losing people. Be afraid of losing yourself trying to please others. I think people also respect you more if you respect yourself and set healthy boundaries. I think learning to know yourself and learning when to say no is a crucial thing to learn as an adult and in life. <laughs> and next thing, okay, this one's a fun one. Um, this one's about cleaning. <laughs> so another thing, I'm kind of sharing everything about myself here. So this is a, maybe a bit too much, but I hope that it helps some people and some people can relate. But I always get so envious of people who are just naturally so clean and tidy and they love cleaning. And even if I do a surprise visit, their house just seems to be clean. Do you know those type of people? <sighs> like, I wish I was like that. I know how important being clean is and being tidy because the more tidy and decluttered your spaces the more you have peace of mind it's a sign of respect to yourself and your home I'm just honestly telling you that i'm still working very hard on and i have but i have seen improvements and i have improved and, and now i enjoy my cleaning time whenever i have free time i enjoy cleaning and that's something i would not be able to say a few years ago for those people that are the same as me and would want to up their cleaning habits or up their cleaning game I would really recommend a book that you guys have probably read before but if you haven't read it it's a life life changing I've learned a lot from this book and I would really 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 recommend it if you haven't read it already The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo and being clean is life changing there's a lot of proven be benefits of it too so I would really recommend to up your cleaning game now that I bought my first home it's a home that I really want to protect and to keep clean. When we move into our new home, maybe in three months after renovations, we can tackle cleaning together, so subscribe. Or if you have any cleaning tips, then comment below, please. It'll be so useful and helpful. On the next um, point, instead of being a dreamer, be a doer. Yes, yeah, so I have so many dreams and I would talk about it. And talk is talk and talk is cheap. <laughs> That's it, talk is cheap. And I think to make your dreams come true, you need to take action. And like this YouTube thing, uh, I'm not gonna become a YouTuber if I don't make videos like this or if I don't post. Uh, if you want to be a doctor, you're not going to become a doctor if you don't study and if you don't apply for med school and prep for interviews and things like that. So you have to take action for your dreams. You can't just think about it and hope that it will happen. You need to move. <laughs> you need to move. Um, next one's embrace failures as an opportunity for growth. I've, I've had failures in my life, but Every single one, I learned so much from. So just think of it as an opportunity and don't fear failure. Fail early while you're young because you have more room to fail when you're a junior or when you're young. Because once you're an adult and you have more responsibility, you may have children, grandchildren, It's there's more consequences when you fail. So another one, don't always believe what you think. Our thoughts are our thoughts, but they can be assumptions as well. So don't always believe them. If you're not sure, get evidence to prove your thoughts. Next one's your habits and actions define you and I truly believe this. It, what you do every single day really will make you who you are. Another life-changing book for me. When I found out my one of my best friends hadn't read this book yet, I bought it for her and sent it to her and she loved it and she thought it was life-changing too. So life-changing book. If you haven't already, read it. It is Atomic Habits by James Clear. I'm sure you have <laughs> but if you haven't, read it. It's really, really good. Next one is exercise. Exercise is important. It increases your energy, mood, and overall health. And something in my life that I learned is that exercise is different for other people. You see people doing Pilates, like reformer Pilates or yoga or gym, and you think that if you do that too, then you'll be as fit as them. But uh, I realized that everyone does exercise differently. And as long as you're moving your body, and doing something that you love and you're having fun with, go for that. You don't have to do what everyone's doing. Just because Blackpink is doing reformer Pilates doesn't mean you have to do reformer Pilates. If you have the funds and you think it's fun and you enjoy it, then go for it. But if you don't have the funds and you're not even enjoying it, don't do it. Do an exercise that you want to do. There's people that love badminton, 
do badminton, there's people who love um, swimming, do swimming, like it's okay. For me, I love dancing and it's a form of cardio and I love it. And I also like doing Pilates at home and those two I think have stuck with me the longest. I've tried multiple different things because I was influenced by others and the media, but nothing stuck as much as Pilates and dancing. It's because I enjoyed it so much and it isn't a form of exercise that I dread to do. So yeah, find something that excites you and makes you want to move. The next one is macronutrients. Macro, I can't say it. Macronutrients are useful and important to kind of learn. Just learn about carbs, protein, and fat, and make sure that you have a well balanced diet. Even as a doctor, I need to encourage reduce your sugar intake and salt intake, have more fruits and veggies, all of that. But I know that everyone's human and sometimes you just want a Jollibee or you want KFC or McDonald's, which is fine. But the majority of the week, so more than five days of the week, have a well-balanced, healthy diet and your body and health will thank you. And next thing, oh, this one's nice. You matter and your opinions and voice matters. I have always thought that uh, I should just keep quiet and keep to myself. That's something else to unpack. Uh, maybe I work, I care too much what people think and I'm worried that I'll say the wrong thing, but it's fine. Just, I think your voice and opinions matter. Maybe it doesn't suit or doesn't complement someone else's opinions or values, but your thoughts matter and your feelings matter. And even in relationships, sometimes when you say your opinion or feeling and your significant other, or maybe even in families, devalue or they don't accept your opinions or thoughts, you th sometimes feel like, oh, they don't matter. My thoughts are worthless or useless. That's not true. Every opinion you have, every feeling you have is of value and there's a reason why you're feeling it and it's okay. I think I ranted about my external hard drive to one of my uh, good friends Nicole and I apologize for ranting to her and she said no your feelings your opinions your thoughts are valid and I thought that was really sweet so thank you Nicole she's also a youtuber I'll put her link down below too next thing hurt people hurt people I've been hearing this a lot more recently and I think it's something I tell myself a lot in the hospital because there's some patients that are very hurtful to healthcare staff a lot of the healthcare professionals are amazing selfless loving souls and all the people that I work in, well, in my specialty, they're doing this job because they care about people. Going to hospital to work, to care for others and having people hurt you or swear at you, say negative things or racist or sexist and rude, it's tough and it's it's not nice. It's a not, not, not nice feeling at all. At times I would get really affected by it. Now I realize instead of getting affected, I just changed my mindset. I guess people who are in hospital are shocked they were probably hurt, um, not just physically, but emotionally. And hurt people tend to hurt others. And that's just the way they express their hurt. I learned that instead of hurting back, what they actually really need is compassion and kindness. Oh. Don't take it to heart. If you're spiritual, you pray for them or you just help them as much as you can and be compassionate. That's all you can do. And I think even in hospital, when someone says hurtful things, once I do something kind or compassionate, they stop and then they apologize and you realize, okay, sorry, that was bad. So what's that Selena Gomez song? Kill them with kindness. <laughs> That's what you do. And next thing is embrace new experiences and take risks. Um, I learned to lean into discomfort. The more you step out of your comfort zone, the faster you grow. Next one, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. Never stop learning and always be curious about the world around you. And I, I love that. I've always been very curious. I'm a lifelong learner and every single day I'd love to learn something new. And I think it's fun learning something new. Next one, self-confidence is a magical thing. Believe in yourself and your abilities. Don't let self-doubt hold you back. Self-confidence is another topic in itself. And if you're interested in this topic and want me to make a separate video on it, then please comment below. So I know that that's something you want to listen to and I'll make a video on that. Next thing, surround yourself with positive people who encourage and support you, that's a given. If you feel like there's some people in your life that's bringing you down, that's making you feel negative, your confidence is going down, uh, your self-esteem is going down, just separate from that person even for a week and see whether your life's changed, whether your life's improved. And if it has, then that person needs to go or you need to spend less time with that person. And it's fine, like we need to protect ourselves. At the end of the day, it's our life. Spend more time with people who make you, you, make you feel happy, loved, and encouraged. And that's what I've been trying to do. And it's just, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. And lastly, 
be open-minded and willing to listen to other people's perspectives, feedback, and criticism. And, but always reflect on it yourself and take it with a grain of salt. So that is all my advice. I don't take feedback very well and that's something that my boyfriend can attest to. I... <laughs> And it's tough, but I know how important it is to be able to, to be open-minded and take criticism and feedback. And the more open-minded you are, I guess, the more you learn and grow and you find out about yourself. Now that I'm in my 20s, I feel like 20s is a time in your life where you learn so much about the world and so much about yourself. Maybe you're starting your job, maybe you're starting a, fa a family. Navigating your 20s is a lot. I wish there was a guide on it, but you, you just learn all these things as, as you age and as you grow. This is 27 things, but I can probably talk forever and I'll probably have more things, but I know that this is just a start and life is a journey and there's gonna be so many other things that I'm gonna learn. I'm excited for that. Life is a journey. It's not about the destination. Life is a journey. Anyways, that's it. My tea, I still didn't finish it. Finished, but yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed our tea talk. Thanks for tuning in with me and chatting. And if you like this type of content, please give it a like, comment, subscribe, and share it to other people you, you think that this will be useful for. If you have any wisdom, any life advice that you'd like to give me, I'd love it. I love reading it and learning from other people. Please comment below and I read every single one. So as I always end it, I hope you're happy, healthy, and safe. Keep learning and keep growing and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.